So in the spirit of the season, I thought I'd tell you a little love story. But I gotta warn you, this is not your typical romantic tale. Ned started innocently enough, we met online. I mean, who doesn't meet online these days, right? But then I started seeing her with my friends and they all seemed so pumped and excited to be with her. And you know that feeling, right? I had to get to know her, I had to have her. And that's when I became the owner of an up band from Jawbone. It was beautiful, it's sleek, and it grabbed my wrist and held me. Now, if you're not up to date on all the really cool, hip hardware, what this thing does is it measures you. It measures how much you walk, it measures how you sleep, it measures whether or not you're sitting on your butt too much. But the truth is, it's so much more. It's not just an overpriced pedometer, no. She was all about me. She was going to make me better. I was going to know more about myself so that I could become that stud that I thought I was, you know, deep down in this sort of pudgy body down there somewhere. It really, it was there. I knew it was gonna happen. I was filled with anticipation. This was the relationship. Unfortunately, things didn't turn out so good from the very beginning. Instead of being the positive reinforcement I had expected, she was a nag, constantly telling me that I was sitting too much, not walking enough. And God forbid what she thought about what I did in bed. Well, let me just say, I was a disappointment in ways that I can't imagine. And if that wasn't enough, even if I could meet her goals, I had to have all of these other apps in my life if we were going to have a relationship that worked. I had to have things that measured the calories. I had to, and this, I love this, right? I had to have a different app to measure my bicycle riding because according to her, sitting on a bicycle was the same as sitting in front of a TV drinking beer. But I stuck with her. And I know all of you people want me to tell you now that I got better, that I became that man I was going to be. I didn't. In fact, the relationship got ugly very quickly when I realized she was lying to me, giving me a thousand extra steps during my 45-minute drive to work. That just weirded my mind out, right? But that was nothing compared to what the other apps were doing to me. Like the day I got the email from my run keeper congratulating me on going 4,700 4, feet uphill. If you've ever been on the, the trail in winter springs where the total elevation is 4.7 inches, I'm not sure how this stuff happens, okay? <laughs> I had become a zombie in oh so many ways, and then the ultimate thing happened. The damn thing broke. And it didn't even know when I went to bed at night, so it thought I was awake 24 hours a day, but you know what was really pathetic? I kept looking at it, checking the data to find out whether or not I was doing any good. I couldn't even keep up with her staying awake all day long. That was it, I was done. This thing deserved to go on the trash heap of another one of those broken consumer dreams. Those technologies that are promised to do something for us and do absolutely nothing. And I swear to you it will someday soon. Right now she's sitting on the dresser. I shun her openly. I think that's fair, right? For the way she's treated me. Now you may just think this is another one of those pathetic, sad love stories of an old man who fell for the allure of the young siren. Okay, maybe it is. But actually, I think it's much more insidious. I think this is part of a huge trend, a dangerous trend. And I want all of you people to be as afraid of this as I am because I think your future is at risk. Everybody wants us to be connected. They want us to measure everything that we do. Already, millions and millions of people have fallen into the trap of becoming members of the self-surveilled. Who needs the NSA? We're going to spy on ourselves. <laughs> And we're going to collect more and more data. Imagine the things that we can do. And that's just the beginning. There are all these apps that go with the data that are going to give you feedback and tell you what you need to change about yourself. And these insidious bastards are not going to be happy just knowing whether or not you eat too much pie or don't walk enough. They want to know what makes you happy, what makes you sad. Do you want a machine making you perky all of the time? Is that our future? Now let's face it, this is not a surprise. As human beings, one of our biggest failures is our desperate need for external validation. We all need to have somebody tell us that we're okay. But a machine? A device? Is that really what our future is? Now, this is not a problem of the digital age, right? This desperate need for external validation has been around since the beginning of time. It's the result of, because of that, we have religion and dictators. Think about it for a minute. What does it take for an entire country to go crazy for some maniac unless it's a need for validation? But you're telling me I know. It's science. This is not mythology. And when was the last time science did anything bad for us, right? I mean, you know, so we have a few nuclear meltdowns and some polar caps melt and we lose some polar bears and all, you know, what the heck? 
because at the end of the day, science gives us all these cool toys and it gives us the latest brand. So do we really care? Okay, I can tell, it's gotten quiet. You think I've gone too far. This is only about numbers, I get it. Numbers that we willingly give to some machines so that they can help us better meet some goals that we have set for ourselves. Why am I being so freaking paranoid? Well, I will tell you why. It's because they're machines. Did you see the computer that won Jeopardy? Jeopardy, folks, what's more human than that? And what happens when these machines begin to realize that we will do almost anything for a little positive affirmation? What happens when the machines get so smart that they know that they have control over us? What happens when those 10,000 steps a day become 20,000 or 200,000? And who needs 2,000 calories, right? I mean, what does a machine think the image of perfection is? And what happens when they decide that we should all be perfect cyborgs? That's the kind of future that I am afraid that we're actually creating for yourself. Okay, Eddie says I have to stop and end this on a positive note. So there is a lesson to be learned from this. We don't need machines to tell us if we're going to be okay or if we're unhealthy or if we're fat or anything else. Start by listening to yourself. Turn Surrey off. And right now, I want all of you to join me, right? Take a deep breath. Come on, everybody. Um, oh, wait, I got to tell you about this other thing. I just saw it the other day, right? It's this cool thing, and it actually lets you program your dreams. Man, is that awesome? You know, I don't know. I think she's really sexy. I'm going to have to check her out.